what God ordains is always good? When suddenly your spouse or children, someone we love is suddenly taken away. What God ordains is always good when your 16-year-old daughter is diagnosed with cancer. When your prayers seem to go unanswered for the child that you want or for the disease that you want to go away. What God ordains is always good when your little girl needs surgery. Maybe you weren't able to sing the words because of the circumstance in your life. Maybe you weren't able to sing them, but you believe them. You do. Even though you're not feeling it. Because you believe the promises of God. And you believe that God loves you dearly. And so you know. And so we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. And you realize why you can be absolutely 100% certain that God guides everything in your life for good? You know why? Because you are chosen. This promise of God is not for every, everyone. Everything doesn't work out for the good of everyone. It does not. This is God's promise to you because you are chosen. Yes, we are talking about the doctrine of election, a.k.a. predestination, the beautiful truth that before the creation of the world, God chose you to be holy and blameless in his sight. And when we hear those words, when we hear about that beautiful doctrine of Scripture, we cannot help but ask the question, why me? Why did he choose me? Why did God choose me to be saved? Why did God choose you? Well, you know why we choose people, right? Ladies, why did he choose you? Gentlemen, why did she choose you? You know how it started. You saw something that you liked, right? Yes? Of course! It's okay. I don't want to... Of course you did. You're like, wow. And so what did you do? You saw something you liked and you walked over there. And then you realized, I not only like what I see on the outside, I like what I see on the inside. That's the way it works. And then like turned to love and of course you know the rest of the story. But that's not how the story goes when it comes to God choosing you. When God looked over all of mankind and every person that would ever be born, including you, including me, what was his evaluation? What was his assessment? We heard it earlier in Romans. There's no one righteous. There's no one good. There's no one holy. There's no one blameless. They are not blameless. They are blameful, full of blame, full of guilt, and very good at blaming me and others for their own sins. They are altogether worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. That was God's assessment of all of mankind, including you and me, and yet, are you ready for this? 
The hymn that we just sang earlier states it so beautifully. Two wonders here that I confess my worth and my unworthiness. How can that be? That God looks at all of mankind and said there's no good, not even one, and yet he choose, He chose, he chooses you. How can that be? That is the doctrine of predestination, the doctrine of election. And Paul, in the same text, guarantees us, he gives us five reasons that you can be absolutely certain that God guides everything. Yes, good and bad, suffering and blessing, and he works it all out for your good. He gives us five reasons. Number one, he foreknew you. God knew beforehand all those he would save. God knew from eternity that he would choose you. And so reason number two, he predestined you, which means that he set a boundary around you. He marked you off as his own. In other words, hands off sin, hands off Satan, hands off death. You can't have this one because this one is mine and nothing can snatch them from my hand. And number three reason. And so in time, he called you. He called you by the gospel. He called you to faith. He called you out of the darkness of unbelief and into the light of his salvation. And because he called you number three, or number four, I should say, he justified you. We've talked about that word as well. It's just as if I never sinned, absolutely. Because God has justified you. He has declared you not guilty and not because of anything you have done but because he was willing to not spare his own son, but give him up for us all on a cross for you and for all of our sins. And those he's justified, Paul says he also glorified. Did you catch that? Paul doesn't say he will glorify you. He says you're glorified. Do you feel glorified? But he says, you're glorified. That's what the, it's the heiress. It's a fact. It's happened. How can that be? How can Paul say that? Because he knew you and wanted you from eternity. And he marked you off as his own in eternity. And then in time, called you to be his own and justified you. And since all of that has already happened, since all of that has already taken place, you can be sure it's as good as done that one day he will glorify your body and it'll be just like Jesus' body. From God's perspective, it's already done. And this, all of this is why you can be sure, absolutely certain that God guides everything all things for your eternal good. We know this, right? We believe this, right? In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I bet three quarters of you memorized that passage. And even if you didn't memorize it, you know it. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Or it is also translated, everything works out for those who love God. It's saying the same thing. But I love this perspective that everything, good and bad, are working out. Because you know who's behind it. We know this and yet we struggle with it. We struggle with this beautiful passage of God's providence like we struggle with another beautiful doctrine, the doctrine of predestination or election. Because who can make sense of it? And there's the problem. We try to. Who can make sense of it? The Bible says God wants who to be saved? 
all to be saved. And the Bible also says what? God chooses only a certain number. How do you make sense of that? You don't. And God doesn't want you to. God did not give us the doctrine of election so that we could figure it out, so that we could make sense of it all. God does not reveal his will from eternity so that you can make sense of it. God gave us the doctrine of election so that you could know it and believe it and have this beautiful comfort that my salvation, are you listening? This is what the doctrine of election is all about, so that you can have this comfort, my salvation, the salvation of my eternal soul from beginning to end is in one person's hands, and that is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's it. From the fact that he foreknew you and to that time that he will glorify you, even though God says you're glorified from beginning to end, it's all in God's hands. And that's why you can be absolutely certain that Romans 8.28 is not a cliche. Oh, everything will work out. No. God works all things, good and bad, for your eternal good. And we know this, but it's like, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Right? Right? Because we still struggle with it. And do you know why? Because it doesn't look good. How can this be good? This is not good. Not now. We're impatient. Because the good just doesn't come. Or it doesn't feel good, right? How can this be good? This doesn't feel good. This is not fun. Because we let our mind and our reason and our emotions blind our faith, and the beautiful truths of God's word. Brothers and sisters, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when it comes? Or maybe you are dealing with it, you are in it right now. What are you going to do when disaster or difficulty or disease, and then there's the big D, death, What are you going to do? Are you going to trust you and your feelings, or are you going to trust God and his word? This doesn't feel good right now, what you're experiencing, what you're going through. You can't see the good. What does God say? He is in control. He is guiding, and everything is working for your eternal good. Believe it. Or you're not feeling God's love. You're not feeling God's presence. You're not feeling forgiven because you're feeling guilty because of sin. Or maybe it's just one sin that just keeps coming back and you just don't think God is going to keep forgiving me. Okay, what does God's word say? He says you're justified which means you're declared not guilty, fully and freely forgiven of all of your sins. Believe it. And I know you can see it on your face and you can feel it in your bones and you know the mind and the body is just not getting better. And you know every day that goes by, every moment that goes by, I am one day closer to that day. But what does God say? And think about this. Talk about everything working out for your eternal good. Everything, even death, working out for your eternal good. Think about it. Death? (laughs) So what? Through death, God gives me life. Brothers and sisters, through death, he gives you victory. Death? Who cares? I will not die but live. Okay, I will die. And I will rise. You will. 
you're glorified. From God's perspective, it's as good as done because you're justified, because he called you to faith, because he marked you out as his very own, because he knew you before the creation of the world that you would be his. Remember this. And remember that when evil comes in your life, and it does, and it will, evil, not good, remember God is not the author of evil. He doesn't want it. He doesn't will it, but it comes. And you know why it comes? Because God allows it. He does. And we don't always understand. And he can stop it. Remember that too. But he is always controlling it and using it for his purpose. Don't forget the story of Joseph and his brothers. I mean, this story, I read it, I get choked up every time. Remember the story of Joseph and his brothers? They were so mean to him, and they threw him in the cistern. Oh, let's sell him to a caravan of Ishmaelites. They get rid of their brother. How can they do such a thing? And from Joseph's perspective, it was evil. He tells his brothers when they finally met each other again, he says, You intended to harm me. Yeah, evil. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. That's Joseph's story. Here's mine. I've told you a hundred times, well, here's 101. Driving down Highway 41 in the middle of a blizzard, Little Toyota Corolla starts a fishtail. Right into the ditch. Two feet of snow. Stuck there for hours. Bad, right? It was so good. Because if God and his angels or both didn't push our car into the ditch, we'd have been squashed by that huge semi that was coming up right behind us. Nothing was stopping that thing. That's my story. What's yours? It's probably much better than mine. And it didn't feel good at the time, did it? And you could not see at the time how it was going to work out for good, but then in time you once again learned what God ordains is always good. But maybe you still haven't seen it. Maybe you still don't know the good that God is working in your life. Okay. He doesn't promise that, does he? He doesn't promise that you always see the good. But that's where uh, Samuel Rodigas's hymn comes in again. He says, someday, someday I shall see clearly that he has loved me dearly. Maybe not today, but someday. Because you know how the story ends. You know how the story ends. You know the end of the story. Glory. Brothers and sisters, yours is a story that never ends. Because you are chosen. Amen.